Yeah, so now for our First Amendment Award recipients. And if you haven't attended a meeting before, this is something that we do every year. We look at, um, typically it's one person in our community who has gone above and beyond um, normal call of duty, I guess, to preserve First Amendment rights. And um, our award this year, we have three award recipients. Um, all three of them are just amazing people who put up with a lot and didn't stop fighting. So um, the murder of George Floyd last year on May 25th, it was a real turning point for our nation. Um, an unfortunate, another awakening that our nation needed a revitalization. Um, and in the middle of the pandemic, people all around the country, all around the world, even joined in and took to the streets to remind everyone of the truth that black people deserve equal rights, respect and dignity, that we're all equal regardless of the color of our skin, the color of our hair or where we live. Um, in Tampa Bay, we saw people exercising that first amendment right in all five of the counties that we cover. Um, it was amazing. It was amazing um, to see so many people coming out, taking to the streets, taking the social media to assert that Black lives do matter. And these protests were peaceful, but not everyone welcomed the message. You only needed to open the newspapers to see reports of police confrontations, protesters hit by cars, people threatening protesters, um, verbally at protests, trying to run over protesters on social media. Um, it really became an issue of the protest of people who are protesting of their lives being endangered just because they had the nerve to speak out and to raise their voice. So today we want to recognize three individuals who saw the real ugly side of the First Amendment issues up close. They never flinched. They were bold, they were brave. They protested in Newport Ritchie, Pasco County, a city that has been long known for its racism, city and county. In fact, in Pasco County, the KKK were still, <laughs> were still sponsoring Moon Lake Road highway as a cleanup. Uh, they had adopted the highway for roadside cleanup up until the mid 1990s. So these three speaker speakers today were so brave. They were harassed in Newport Ritchie. They were yelled at. They had their lives threatened. They were shoved, assaulted by people, counter protesters, whose whole intention was to go out to their pro to the protest, disrupt the protest, and frighten the people who were making their voices heard. They had racist brandish guns at them, threatened their lives, and they had their lives threatened on social media just for speaking out. They were also threatened by the city. They were fined by the city for raising their voices. And one of them was even arrested for speaking out. Despite all this, they didn't stop speaking out. Their persistence in the face of attempts to silence them served really only to amplify their voices. They've shown the world a dark corner of Florida that tried to hide from the sunlight. And with hiding in the shadows no longer an option, they're making change inevitable where the status quo can no longer be defended. They did all of this by using the rights given to them by the First Amendment, by exercising their right to speak in a country where none have the power to silence them. And in so doing, they embody the power that the First Amendment bestows on all of us who know and dare to use it to make Florida and the world a better place for all. So it's my honor to introduce the recipients of the 2021 First Amendment Award. And I'm going to introduce each of them um, just in, 
individually in order of alphabetical order by name. So Christina Ina Bonetta is a mother and community organizer with Black Lives Matter Pasco. You'll find her in the streets protesting to call attention to the police injustice in Newport Ritchie. And you've probably seen her in the chambers of City Hall to take elected and appointed officials to task for their inaction to combat the racism in Newport Ritchie. She has met with the Newport Ritchie city manager to discuss how Black Lives Matter Pasco can help the community. So thank you so much, Christina Benetta. Thank you. Thank you so much. We appreciate you and your voice and don't ever let them <laughs> shut you down, speaking up. No, I appreciate it all so much. When you were just saying everything, it almost made me cry, just like recapping the whole summer. I never thought like I would be here right now, but I definitely wanted to stop complaining about the issues in, in the world and actually stand up and do something about them. And it means a lot that I'm here, so thank you. Thank you. Thank you so for everything that you do for the community at Pasco. I went to high school in Pasco, so thank you so much. It needs a lot of work. <laughs> and next um, is Rachel Giuliani Hagenbau. And she advocates for freedom of expression. She served as a volunteer legal observer for Black Lives Matter Pasco. And she has many years of dedicated activism and community service in the Tampa Bay area. She served PASCO in several capacities. She was a president of the Newport Ritchie Cultural Affairs Committee. She's worked on the Anclo River pickup project and a measure to make sidewalks that are safe and walkable in PASCO. She participated in the Tampa Santo protests and participated in city council meetings to make sure that elected officials hear from their constituents. Now, as a mother and a long-term resident of Pasco, Rachel is running to be a member of the Newport Ritchie City Council herself, bringing a voice to a much needed, an area where voices like hers are much needed. Um, if you're unaware, the, the Newport Ritchie City Council is completely white male. So we're rooting for you, Rachel, to, to bring diversity to that City Council. Thank you. Oh, thank you. And I'm grateful for the acknowledgement um, to spotlight the challenges that's been going on here in Newport Ritchie and in Pasco. Um, but this is all on the coattails on Black Lives Matter activists. Um, I'm pretty much just echoing accountability and transparency that's greatly needed here. But I, I greatly thank you and appreciate uh, everything and all the help we've been getting. Thank you. Thank you so much, Rachel. And if you can see, Rachel is actually joining us today. She has been doing, um, she does weekly walks around Newport Ritchie to speak to citizens. So that's what she's doing today. And she was gracious enough to take time out of her walk to, to come and join us. So thank you, Rachel. Oh, thank you. Rachel, what does your mask say? Uh, Rachel for city council. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> uh, woman for change. I, I, I cannot deny people a little self-promotion when they deserve it, so very nice. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah, we're all canvassing today. So definitely want to be COVID safe. Definitely, definitely. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you so much, Rachel. And finally, our third recipient today is Marlo Jones. Marlo is the president of Pasco Young Revolutionaries. He's organizing members of Black Lives Matter Pasco to challenge the injustices and to hold police accountable for misdeeds in Pasco. Marlo is a father, USF World History and Political Science graduate, and a longtime Pasco resident. Um, Marlo, thank you so much for all the work that you've been doing in Pasco. Thank you so much, Gretchen. I truly appreciate it. And uh, 
thank you to the ACLU, the uh, Greater Tampa Chapter for being there for us, uh, helping us, giving us legal advice and uh, just being there with us through the struggle uh, that we've been facing here. And just a big thank you to everybody involved, you know, uh, everybody that I've met over the past year. It's truly been amazing, truly been amazing to connect with such wonderful people. Uh, you know, we're making history. That's what I feel. Thank you. Yes. And definitely all three of you are making history. And it's been incredible to to watch your your perseverance in Pasco, knowing how you know the government tried to stifle your speech. And then also, you know, you had all of these outside groups from different counties coming into Pasco to threaten your lives because you were speaking out. Um, so Thank you, three, so much. Um, it's Thank your work you. is so important. I have a question to um, any of the recipients. Um, often, right, you know, often we hear, particularly you know, in conservative media, that Black Lives Matter is this national movement to really, you know, um, do terrible things to this country. But what seems to often be missed is how local these movements are. And I, I wonder if any of you all could speak to how how you are really able to really galvanize people on a local level to organize them, to really get them involved in, and try to come out and support some of the initiatives that you all are, are bringing to our attention. Um, yeah. Go ahead, go ahead. Uh, well, I think for me, just like I've always said, these issues are in every part you know, of America. So everyone needs to stand up locally within their communities to make changes. So basically, I can't, we can't really speak for the big or big organizations, but when you start voting locally and start, you know, learning about your community and what the people need and what's going on, that's when things start happening, you know. So I just think that it's important that no matter where you are, that you, you know, that you that you stand up in your community, because I always say it takes a community to change one. So um I don't know if that really answers the question, but I just think that like when people really get involved, that's when you see it like a lot of, you know, a lot of change is, is when you have love for your community and, and, and you, there is no community anymore, basically. Like we have to start loving one another, you know, knowing one another and actually caring enough and caring about each other's children, um, you know, to, to make differences. Um, yeah, I would just piggyback off of that. Um... I felt that, uh, you know, I've been a part of the Pasco community for so long. I grew up here my whole life. My great grandmother uh, moved here from Georgia during the great migration in the 1920s. And we've been on the same plot of land that African Americans could, that's the only place they could be in the whole Newport Ritchie. And they, you know, still right next to my grandmother's house is the Booker T. Washington uh, school where my grandmothers went to school because they couldn't go to Gulf High School. I noticed that a lot of people really started to support us when they seen that we were actually doing good things, you know, trying to do things to feed the homeless, trying to just hold police accountable. Before we got started with this, the Newport Ritchie Police Department had about 10 body cams, about 50 officers and 10 body cams. And I say with enough good trouble that we made, now they have about 60, you know? So we were really trying to just hold them accountable because they were doing such horrible things to where some of the public didn't even believe it until we started coming out and showing them like, this is what's going on. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, thank you all. Can um, I just say one more thing? Oh, sorry. Yes, yes, please. I just want to say one more thing. One, one thing that we kind of focused on and I still want to focus on is it's one thing for me, uh, like to defund the police, like, you know, defunding the police and, it, basically, it's not all about all about that defunding the police and putting putting funds in other areas and programs. Because what is the funding the police when you still have the same officers in the police department? So we've really tried to focus and and speak with um, city hall and different people about police that have been fired from other agencies and are rehired. And you know, as some of you may know, one of the police officers we actually got fired for leaking our information. You know, there's officers. Um, in the Newport Ritchie Police Department that are proudly f flying co Confederate flags, um, police officers that are sympathizing with people um, like Kai and Rettenhouse, um, 
Kyle Rettenhouse. So, um, you know, just to put out there, um, every, every community, every city is different and we all need different needs and we all have different needs. And, you know, um, so again, a big focus is getting those police officers out and making sure they're not rehired. You know, again, because they're being rehired into the Newport Ritchie Police Department and it, it, like, how can anyone feel safe? I just wanted to just put that out there real quick. Sorry. Yeah, and I'm could sorry. I say something real quick, Gretchen? <laughs> yes, definitely. Um, yeah, um, I just wanna say um, congrats to these three individuals. Phenomenal, phenomenal recognition for what these, these three people have done and to really put it in, in perspective since the jump for these three, uh, for these three people. Um, one of my favorite sayings, I forget who said it, like came to mind and there's, there's certain types of leaders, right? And there's leaders who pursue leadership. And then there's leaders who have it thrust upon them. And, and those leaders, some of them will find that it looks good on them. And these three people, I feel, had leadership thrust upon them. And they performed phenomenal in an otherwise dire and uncertain situation. I mean, they were arrested. They were cited. They were followed. They were harassed. They were assaulted. Um, and yet they stood strong for over a year. I mean, 2020 was hellacious at best, but, but they really, um, they really showed it endurance and perseverance. And then to me as a, as a Pasco community leader uh, who runs Pasco Pride, I couldn't be more proud to support Rachel for city council and to support Marlo and Nina in every endeavor because they are just outstanding. So congratulations, you guys, you deserve it. Thank, thank you, you thank so you. Much. Making me over here tear up, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Yes, well said, Nita, and that's so true because we all five of our counties had had protests this summer, had demonstrations, but I don't think we didn't even get the amount of pushback in Polk as you guys did in Pasco, and to see the three of you persevere, and I know that you're probably still getting death threats on your social media accounts, so for you three to continue this, um, in the likes of, you know, in this atmosphere where where people who, and I can't even relate to, to understand why they go out and counter protest, um, your protest for equality. I can't even begin to fathom where, where they're coming from, but for you to continue to stand up and to fight for equality when these people are going out there threatening you, pushing you, brandishing guns, and sending you death threats on social media. I mean, wow. You know, keep up the fight because Pasco does need to change. So, and you three are, are great for making change in that county. Thank you so much. Thank you, Gretchen. Uh, thank you. Yeah. So, thank so if you everyone all just for everything. give a round of applause. We do have beautiful awards for that will be sent to the three of you, um, but I don't have them here, so <laughs> they will be. We'll be sending you all. We have these beautiful glass awards for the three of you um, for your hard work this year. So thank, thank you, you so, so much. much. So much. Thank you so so much. Thank you.